Okay, so I found this great crab reference, very high resolution. And what I like about it is it has the shell as a transition. And a really good tip for fantasy creatures, hands and feet, and even heads and necks, is it's always helpful to have kind of a textural transition built into them. Like a, a fur ruff at the neck or a row of spikes at the chest, that kind of thing. Something at the wrist. Superheroes almost always have like gloves that flare out or have bracelets or ankle boots with big kind of uh, rubber straps that go around the calves because it's good to have that transition. So the shell here provides that transition already for the my hands going into a different texture. So I'm going to cut it out. I'm trying to cut it out pretty well. Just so I don't have to waste time doing that later. Because I know exactly where the transition is going to be. So I'm going to use shift and option to modify my selection here. Option to cut away. Oops, I actually want shift to add in. And again, because it's organic, we're all doing creatures, we're all doing a lot of organic stuff. We can kind of create our own edge. Man, I'm just messing this up. I think that will work. So I'm going to duplicate that with Command J. I use Command J an awful lot in this class, especially for compositing. Still trying to get a slightly better selection. Complete with little imperfections. Because that's what sells the illusion in full resolution once it's printed. Using shift and option to really modify. Okay, you get the idea. So I'm going to duplicate that, Command J, get rid of the original smart layer. Haha, <laughs> that already looks cool. Uh, I, just like with the cartoon jumble, I don't want the eyes. So what can I do? Well, I can internally composite, take a chunk of it, duplicate it, transform it, and move it over where the eyes are. Not do that. Let's try that again. Take a chunk, duplicate it, Command J. I'll move it before I transform it. I think it's because I'm on group instead of layer. Where is it? Huh. must have something selected. So I'm hitting Command-D to deselect. Because when things don't work the way you expect, it's usually because you have something selected that you're not aware of. All right, I'm missing something. Select a chunk. Duplicate it. Command-J. 
Make sure it's there. There it is. Then move it on top of the eye. There we go. Transform it. I want to cover that up. That's internal compositing. Maybe erase away from its edge a tiny bit. That's internal compositing. Then I can duplicate that and then move it over to the other eye, flip it, erase away from it, and then I can merge all those layers back together. So all three of those merge with Command E. Now it's all together. Now I've got the start of my hand. I can try warping it, changing its shape a little bit, but it already looks kind of hand-like to me, which I like a lot. So now I'm going to take that, I'm going to duplicate it, Command J, and make the other hand. Now how am I going to do that? I'm going to flip it horizontally. And I think actually that makes a better left hand, and this one makes a better right hand. So I'm going to play with its size and set it back. And let's see. going to do command X and paste so I have this kind of thumb thing to work with and maybe move it behind like that that's better and then I'm going to burn it a little bit and then merge those two together so a lot of internal compositing happening And then for the other one, same sort of thing. Grab this shape, Command X, Command V, place it differently, maybe warp it a little bit, change its shape. And then maybe not stick this one behind, but leave it on top. And use eraser to blend it in slightly. And burn it a little. All right, good. Now their lighting is a little too similar, so I'm going to take the big one and brighten it up using levels. Oh, I'm going to combine those layers first. Brighten it up a little bit. And then with color balance, I'm going to Push its shadows towards the blues, but its highlights towards the yellows. Okay, and then the other one, color balance. Not on the right layer. Let's see. It is this one. It can be very helpful to label your layers. It can get confusing. So 
I'm going to deepen these shadows a little bit and just darken it overall. And maybe even just take the saturation down slightly under hue saturation. Because it's further back. Okay, now I had that idea for the pine cones for the forearms. So let's try that. So the color might be too similar. I like it a lot. Grab this pine cone. Try to select it out pretty cleanly. We'll just do a rough cut first. Duplicate it, get rid of the smart object. Move it behind the hands. Come on. Transform it. This is kind of what I was thinking. I wonder if it makes more sense like this. Yes, it does with the lighting. And then, see, I can get this to work. Might not be able to. Let's see. We'll select around it with the lasso with the two pixel feather. And it's pretty difficult taking hard-edged textures like the pine cone and the crab and the shell and merging them with soft textures like the fur, but it is possible. So now I'm going to use levels, work with the lighting a little bit, limit the highlights, and then work with color balance. Really brighten it up make it feel more like it fits within the realm of this photo. Maybe even take its saturation down a little bit. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to duplicate that. And then move it over on the other side. I'm going to flip it horizontally. Try transforming it. There we go. So it's funny, really, all the um, all the lion reference was giving for me was where the joint should be. And I want to keep it there, but that's why I didn't cut out the lion really clearly, because these other overlapping issues are much more important. Where's my hand? There it is. I'm going to distort this a little. There we go. These big, crazy forearms. So now if I turn off the lion's thing, you still see how now everything looks solid, right? So all I need for that lion is that connector piece of the fur there. Okay, so now that I know all that, I can start to cut out the lion a little bit, knowing what areas are actually important and which ones are not. So this can all get pretty skinny. I'm not using the pause at all. 